All right, welcome to another edition of Beginner Breakdown. I am your host, Mike Comer, and uh, tonight we'll be going over uh, missed checkmate opportunities. So whenever you have a chance to checkmate your opponent, you should do it because you don't want to let your opponent come back and get you. So, so we'll be going over uh, some games where unfortunately the opponents let them slip up. So here we go. So white starts out e4. Black counters with e5. White brings out his knight to f3 to attack the pawn. So black protects it, knight to c6. Bishop to c4, that attacks the f7 square. f7 square is the weakest square in chess because it is only protected by the king. And kings cannot capture protected pieces. So that's a really good square to hit on in the opening, especially for white. So black plays knight to f6. This move is not advisable for beginners because it allows the knight to come up to g5. And that puts two attackers on this pivotal f7 square. So if you're playing black in this position, I would try h6, bishop to e7, or bishop to c5. But the move knight f6 just allows this knight to jump in. Do you see how those moves h6, or bishop to e7, or even bishop to c5, doesn't allow the knight in because the queen would take. But this is for beginners. <laughs> if you know book, knight f6 will be okay. Okay, so knight to g5. So now you're in a predicament already, and it's move five. You have to defend f7, because the knight's attacking it, and the bishop, and you're only, defender is the king. So how in the world can we successfully defend f7? There is no way to successfully defend it because if we bring out the queen, the knight can still just come and take. You're not going to trade a queen for two pieces. Okay. Uh, two novice players, they have uh, asked to be remained anonymous for this game. <laughs> So, but we'll, we'll probably let the, uh, but they're both playing in the under 800 division. Let's just say that. There's an under 800 division? <laughs> yes, at the high school championships, yes. Okay, so, so, so how can we stop this bishop from taking on F7 check or attacking it? Anybody have any ideas that are, that's rated under 1400? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so hopefully at home you guys figured out d5. That stops the connection. Now the bishop cannot capture on f7. So we'll take with the pawn. We don't want to take with the bishop because our bishop is an attacking piece, and we're attacking. So when we're attacking, we do not want to trade off our attacking pieces because if we took with the bishop, the knight could come and take us. All right, so we'll take with the pawn, and now our knight is under attack. Uh, no, no questions, <laughs> no questions. <laughs> All right, so there's, there's a lot of different, uh, different variations black can get into. We could take the pawn, which we'll, we'll get into the fried liver attack on an ensuing episode. But right now, we'll say that black plays knight to a5, which is what he plays. Okay, so now, I, I, I personally think that's a weak move. But what should white do to take advantage of, of this situation here? Anybody have any ideas? OK, so, so what, what you should be playing is bishop to b5 check. OK, then he'll block with the pawn. We'll take, hello, Claudio. Pawn takes, and now. Our bishop would go to d3, and we'll put our knight back there eventually. And so that would be a very successful way, and we'll be up a pawn. Unfortunately, white plays the move queen to e2 here. Protects the, uh, the bishop and attacks the e pawn here. But knight takes. We can't take with check. We'll have to take the knight, and we'll go on from there. All right, so knight 
takes the pawn. Okay. So now, white plays knight to c3. Should black capture this knight? It's knight for knight. What do you think? What would be wrong with knight taking the knight? All of a sudden, the queen would go here, and the game would be over. Okay, so, so this knight is in a, a pin. But is any of white's pieces undefended right now? The knight. So we can just take it, okay? And then we'll take their knight. And now we're also protecting g2 here. So bishop comes down and attacks the knight. Very bad move for black. So a way a tactics arise in the game of chess is undefended pieces. Notice this bishop is undefended, especially if they're undefended pieces in your territory. That's when you really want to look for tactics. Look, the bishop's all by himself in your territory. Pieces closest to pieces, pieces close to other pieces, are more likely to be able to attack them and strike them and ultimately get them. So, so we could easily attack the bishop like this, but then he'd be like, oh, my bishop's attack, I better just take your knight or, or move away. Okay, so we need a forcing move to also attack the bishop. So like a double attack, for instance. So who else can we attack here besides the bishop? How about, so we want to attack the bishop with our most powerful piece, the queen. It's pretty close to here. So we could attack it like this, like this, or Excellent. We go to b5, check. All right. Now the king is under attack and the bishop. Double attack. Very powerful move in chess. Okay. But white doesn't see this. They decide we better get castled. That's the most important thing in chess, castling. But that's not right. The most important thing is... Uh, winning material, and winning the game, okay? So, so black decides, I'm going to threaten checkmate. But are they really threatening checkmate in this position? The answer is no. Because queen takes g2 would not be checkmate because the queen is protecting g2. But if we can deflect the queen from the protection, black will be in business, okay? All right, so white plays d3. Very sneaky move. It's a discovered attack. The bishop is now aiming at the queen. All right, so the queen moves. All right, so, so white decides she doesn't like that queen sitting so close to her on g4. I better attack it. All right. So what's a really bad way for white to attack the queen? F3. Uh-oh. So the move F3 broke the connection between the queen and the pawn on G2. So obviously black should checkmate. But unfortunately black doesn't see it. His whole plan was to checkmate, but I guess he lost sight of it for a second. And he retreated to G6. Did he ask for a take back? <laughs> no take backs were allowed. So White decides he could just protect it now, but I might as well take a pawn with check first. Not, yep. Well, the players were beginners, just like uh, just like you and me here. So Rook to f2, stops the checkmate. Bishop attacks the queen. Queen to e4, tries to get the queens off the board. So they oblige. Opens that f file. So now black knows, hey, my bishop's under attack. There's no longer a 
This G-pawn's no longer pinned. I better move it. Not to there, though. Bishop back to e6, okay? So now he gets his pawns rolling. He decides not to trade, uh, keep, keep the attack going. So the bishop retreats. He gets the, uh, the f-pawn. So things are going pretty well for white now that uh, black failed to checkmate him. So bishop check, king over. So now the bishop in a pin takes the knight, takes double pawns. All right, so bishop's in a pin. Let's try to attack it. So unfortunately, they don't. <laughs> But maybe, maybe a, an idea like e5 was good there. But bishop check, pretty good too. Because now uh, this rook will be trapped back on, the, uh, back on a8. So he really wanted to get his rook out when he, when he had the chance. But now after this check, king has to go back to c8 and box that rook in. So now the pawns are going, and white is in control of this game. Rook attacks the bishop. And he decides, or she decides, just to ignore it. Because if takes, we'll just, yeah, we'll, we'll take it with the rook. And just keep, keep, our, keep our pawns nice and protected. Yeah. It, they're both pretty good. But anyhow, um, he decides bishop to a4. And now white is in the driver's seat here. So now here's another example of white. White's now in control. She has a checkmate. The computer says checkmate in 11 or 13 here. But the, it's a pretty simple win here. You play check. All right, they go here, and now you got the pawn, the pawn fork attacking the king and the rook. Take, and now the game, the game's essentially over. Okay, you're up a whole rook. Looks good. So, so now black had a chance to checkmate, and now white has had a chance to uh, checkmate. So they both both missed it because instead of playing check, they're going to play bishop to d6, setting up a delayed attack, a delayed discovery, okay? It's better to just attack, you know? <laughs> don't, uh, don't wait for it to happen. So now rook attacks the bishop, bishop takes, rook takes, all right, you see, King and rook lined up on the same line, and so she gets really excited and plays rook to e8, check. Unfortunately, this is not the best move. The intentions were good, but unfortunately that square is covered by the bishop, and uh, nothing like a free rook. So now white is in trouble. Black is smart. He get, tries to get the, this uh, pawn right away because this is the only guy that could possibly cause any more troubles for uh, black here. So b5. So white's in trouble here. So once black gets this pawn off the board, it should be smooth sailing. They said he'll take all the rest of his pawns. And then, yeah, he, black got it. And so, uh, so there's not much hope for white here, but he could still, like, take this pawn and try. All right, so white attacked the rook, but then he put in the pin. So if you take the rook, black will just come down and capture white's rook so does not want to trade so it brings the king up pieces in a pin put an extra attacker on it so they decide just to abandon the bishop and uh 
it's not going to last much longer. <laughs> well, so, so they take the pawn, and um, it could take, well, they does take the bishop, but it's not exactly free. Rook takes, king takes. <laughs> And so, so now they got the, the easy way to a checkmate a king with the two rooks is you just line them up uh, one a rank apart, just go up, and there's nothing white can do except get checkmated. So, so let's see if uh, our student does any better on the next game. Our hero in this game is, uh, is black. But there are no heroes in this game, unfortunately. <laughs> um, as we'll see, uh, black will miss a mate, white will miss a mate, and then who knows how the end of the game will go. OK, so white starts out e4. Black plays d6. Yes? What's, uh, what's so but both, both are rated uh, under 1,000. Black is rated around uh, 600. White's probably around 800, 900. Okay, so a real, real good game, good game to learn from. You want to learn from these guys' mistakes, so you're not doing them. Okay, that's why we show you these games in the beginner breakdown. We could show you grandmaster games where, oh, grandmaster, you play so good, so good, and you'd be like, well, I wish I could play like that, but I can't. But by by seeing these blunders, you can be like, well, that guy was pretty funny how that guy messed up like that. I'm not going to mess up. You can put that in your game, not messing up. But good moves, good moves take a lot of hard work. You gotta read a lot of books, gotta play a lot of games to get good good like that. All right. So so black plays the perk defense. We saw this uh, last week and how to beat it. So notice how white is not playing uh, along this uh, diagonal here and putting the bishop and queen in a battery. So it makes a, a pretty easy game for a black not to get checkmated and just to play a normal game here. So white castles gets, gets there pretty quick. Black plays e5. But how many players is, are attacking how many players does uh, black have defending e5? Not enough. You need, uh, you need as many defenders as he has attackers. Unfortunately, he's got one, two, three attackers, and you only have two defenders. So, so the math doesn't really add up for you to play e5. So you got to prepare your moves. You can't just play and hope. It's just simple math, actually. Just have as many defenders as he has attackers. E5, so takes obviously, take, take back. Black also takes back. Uh oh. All right. And so, so white, white then took the knight. And now black plays B6. Okay. So now white has another opportunity to win a pawn. He already won one on E5. And now he's got a second chance. So there's a tactic in chess called removing the defender. OK, so notice white's bishop on uh, e5 is attacking c7. But it wouldn't be smart to take it now because the queen would take. The queen is acting as a defender. So if we remove the defender, we can take the pawn for free. So now everybody should have the answer, queen takes d8. So rook takes, and now we're free to take the pawn. And now his rook is attacked. So now rook attacks the bishop. Bishop retreats. It gets his last piece off the back row there, bishop to b7. So double attacking the pawn. So let's see if white protects the pawn. So I think he plays a pretty nifty move here. Uh, rook to e1, not so nifty. And now black gets his rook behind it. All right. So now he pushes the pawn. He prepared, he prepared e5 by putting his rook behind it. All right. So now the knight is under attack. 
knight to g4. So now he's got one, two, three attackers, and white only has two. Okay, so, so we only have two defenders of this pawn, and he has three attackers. So what move should white play not only to save the pawn, but get initiative, get, get an attack on? Anybody have any guesses? All right, Julian. E6. Good. So now E6 does a lot of stuff. It attacks the rook and attacks this pawn with check, forking the king and the rook. Okay? So, so now black sees a, a double attack here. He pounds the move, rook to d4. All right, now both the bishops are under attack, both undefended. But unfortunately, that's all nice and good for black that he's attacking two of uh, white's pieces, but he left his king exposed to a check and left himself exposed to a mate in three. Everybody see how he can get a mate in three here? You want to go ahead? Oh, no. Okay. Well, okay. So, so if you can't find, or if you're doing puzzle books and you can't find a mate in three, mate in two, you should always look for your checks, okay? The most forcing moves. Checks, captures, okay? So, so let me ask you, you can't find the mate in three, but can you find the one check on the board? Yeah, pawn, t pawn takes f7, check. Okay, so you find the check, and then you can find the mate, okay? Obviously, if there's more than one check, so you can just go through the variations. But there's only one check on the board, so that's probably how it's going to start, okay? So pawn takes, pawn check. If I go here, and now can you find a mate in one? Yeah. Three. Yeah, yeah and, and guess what? Any check you do is not, is not checkmate, actually. <laughs> what if you move the e-pawn to e-8? Take the rook. Oh, yeah, the f-pawn to e-8? No, the, the yeah. rook. If you move the rook. Yeah, that, that's checkmate. Also a checkmate is rook here, okay? So he's got two pretty simple mates here, okay? All right, and, and that's how you have to look. You just look for the checks, and hopefully they lead to mate. They don't always, but sometimes they do. <laughs> so, so unfortunately, White got a little, uh, little funny here. Decided, oh, I don't want to lose this light square bishop. It's being so good to me. So he attacks the rook, and now Black doesn't miss the opportunity here to get that uh, mischievous pawn off the board and stop him from getting checkmated. So white now takes, unfortunately, and black takes back. All right, so now he's still got to deal with this bishop. So why not attack a, a pawn <laughs> way down there? Because we really need him, OK? We didn't need to get the king, but, but we need this a7 pawn. <laughs> so black decides to counterattack here. So, so this rook is, is attacking f2, all right? All right, if he gets his rook over here, or knight down there, this could be some trouble for him, okay? So what's an interesting move that white can do to uh, prevent, prevent them from taking this pawn? Obviously, in the game, they played f3, which... You don't want to push your pawns in front of your king site unless you absolutely have to. So if, if a beginner, or if anybody under 1,400 gets the right answer here, they might get a special prize tonight. What is a really cool way? Because this knight is really bugging you. He's down in your territory. This rook down there. So you can stop 
them from taking something on F2 and maybe even harass this knight a little bit. Anybody got any guesses? <laughs> you want to take a guess? Bishop to E2? Very good. See, that's a dual purpose move, okay? It stops the connection between the rook and the pawn, and now if he doesn't uh, move the knight, we'll take it. Yes? Did rook to D1 also work? No. Why not? Is it going to be checkmate? <laughs> well, knight to e2. I mean, that's also kind of cool, but but the bishop. The, All right. Another suggestion was rook to d1. But uh, but who knows? So there's a lot of good moves. I mean, everything's a good move. Bishop to e2 is just the best because it it tells the knight to go away. And, uh, and now the rook's not doing much, okay? But the move in the game is f3, attacks the knight, all right? So, so now the knight, now that the pawn is on uh, f3 instead of f2, the knight can hop in to a nice square here, all right? And now he's attacking the g2 pawn. So he takes, he decides, yep, yep, we'll just trade pawn for pawn. What's, what's the hurt? What's the hurt in that? Well, there's a lot of hurt in that, okay? So now he's in check. He's got to move to h1. And now black can try to put on the finishing touches here with a good move here. Hopefully everybody at home saw a good move. Might as well take. And now this king's got no place to go. Anywhere that rook goes, it's going to be check, okay? So, hey, he took, he took a pawn with his bishop. I'll take a pawn with his bishop, okay? So now, so now, if you count up a lot of your checks, you'll see a really good move for black. Yep. There's actually three different checkmates in this position for black, believe it or not. <laughs> so you got about nine checks here with the rook. Three of them are checkmate. Everybody see the uh, checkmate? G1. Which one? G1. Rook to g1 unfortunately does not do the trick because it lets the king capture. So okay, so that's one out of nine, not the checkmate. Rook to g3, checkmate. Or you can play rook here, or rook here. Rook to g3, he can't take the rook because the bishop is delivering the check. But black plays, unfortunately, rook takes c2, misses the checkmate. Just like white missed the checkmate, now black gets to miss the checkmate. All right. So, <laughs> so king to g1. So now... So now black kind of made a mistake. He should have, uh, he obviously should have checkmated, but he can go back in time if he wants. It's not often in chess you can go back in time, but, but look at this. You go right back in time. All right? And then you could even take more stuff. <laughs> Check him again. Just keep going. And now get the checkmate. <laughs> But, um, but right, but you never want to miss a, a checkmate. It's very, very, very sober in experience. So don't, don't do that. So, so after uh, black plays knight to d5, so he's moving his knight away from the king and uh, So uh, it's kind of falling apart for him now. So takes, takes, rook takes. So a lot of stuff just went down there, and it leaves, uh, leaves white down a piece. So 
we'll go through that real quick here. So, so after knight to d5, bishop, rook took, and now he protected his knight. Knight took, bishop takes, but then the bishop was left undefended, removing the defender. So bishop to e1, so now bishop to e5. So who likes black to win in this position? <laughs> so, who likes white to win in this position? <laughs> Who's going to vote for a uh, draw? <laughs> Alright. So, 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 it'll be an interesting end game here. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So rook, rook double attacks the pawn and pawns. So he saves that one, but loses the a pawn. Bishop check, king here. There's bishop g two mate. And now, and now, black has another opportunity to checkmate, and decides he'd rather. Uh, He'd rather just put his rook so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah. So bishop takes, rook takes. And now black cannot uh, deliver the checkmate. <laughs> rook there. All right. So now he attacks the pin piece. So bishop to g6. White decides he's not going to trade the rook because if he trades the last remaining piece, it will be a loss. Bishop here. King up. All right, so black decides, I'm just going to get my pawns going right now. Rook attacks the bishop. It takes check. All right, king up. H5. All right, so now rook there. So who can, f so it looks like, oh, there's no way white can stop or black can stop white from taking this pawn. So, does anybody have an interesting way he can protect the G pawn? Do you got it? I think so. All right, how? Rook to F3 check. <laughs> oh, oh, rook to F3 check. Great. And then rook up. All right, that's very interesting. But <laughs> black decides something a little funnier. He, Gets a little more creative. Really doesn't want to lose this pawn. So he decides, or she decides actually, I'll just put my bishop in front of it. Because <laughs> she figures if she loses those two pawns, she won't be able to checkmate him, rook and bishop, against the rook. So decides, all right, I'll just get rid of that bishop. It wasn't doing much anyway, and I still got my two connected pass pawns. All right, so black's still thinking everything's great. <laughs> and now, unfortunately, you got too excited with the pawns, and now white has the double attack on Rick. <laughs> and all the hard work of black has gone away. Just comes. And then I don't know how much longer the game goes, but it was decided a draw. <laughs> Black doesn't trade, but <laughs> but it goes on and on and on to a draw. Game? Yes, it's an actual game. I didn't just create it off the top of my head. No, no. Unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I did not. All right, so now we're gonna see one one final game. Um, from our hero in this, uh, in this block of games where she actually sees a checkmate and does it. So we'll give her a big round of applause at the end the when she finally gets it. And so now she is playing white and she, uh, she decides when, when she sees the perk played as we saw in last week's edition, she plays it pretty good 
of how to, uh, to attack the park. So this should all be a refresher from last week. Uh, we get our queen and bishop in a battery, and now we just want to try to just break up this uh, dragon position right away. No, it's great. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so whenever they play e5, we just want to push the pawn. We don't want to give black any counterplay here. c6. So knight f3 I don't really agree with. h4 is, uh, is recommended, highly recommended. Knight to f3. So now black just gets some counterplay here. We want our pawn on f3 in these scenarios, not our knight. All right, so now white is kind of sidetracked from attacking and, and uh, getting the king. So now h4, take with the knight, knight to b6, decides to retreat the knight. So now h5. So knight attacks the queen. So the queen is now protecting the pawn, the bishop. So when they play queen to c1, black sees a way to remove the defender of, uh, of this pawn. Bishop takes, so now the queen has to come up, and now knight takes. But this is a pretty dangerous spot for this queen. Pretty close to your king, once they get the h file open, Checkmate could be right around the corner, so, so kind of unwise for black to let uh, white's queen all the way up there. So, so white tries to get right up there, get rid of this knight, remove the defender of h7. So black doesn't care, rook takes c2. So pawn takes, so this is getting, h file is now open. So white, white has a lot, of, a lot of good counterplay. So queen to a5 check, king to f1, and now black kind of freaks out here, okay? It's never good to freak out. It's better to calculate than freak out, okay? So he's like, oh my god, I'm about to get checkmated. There's nothing I can do. There's always something you can probably do in chess, unless you calculate it out of every single variation, and then you see you lost, and then you just try a Hail Mary anyway, okay? But in this instance, white is not really threatening a checkmate. Let's say black skips a turn, okay? Um, or let's, let's say they take. Let's, let's say they skip. Let's, let's say they play a good move, okay? Like pawn here, okay? All right. Never skip, okay? So, so they're thinking knight takes, knight, removing the defender, h7, rook takes, check, king here. Check. Let's play king here. Rook check. All right, keep the checks. Do we want to play king here? No, because then, well, is white really going to see the mate? mate? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> and actually, that's not even the mate. That's funny. This is the mate, right? But however, um, they're, they're both going to end lead the mate. All right, so. So, ex so after this check, black can just calmly retreat his rook back to f7, and there's no checkmate, okay? So in chess, even though it looks dire, you want to calculate out and make sure before you try anything crazy. So black tries something crazy because he he's almost sure he's going to get checkmated here. So, so he takes the pawn with check, all right? Whenever your opponents are giving away free material, just take it. All right, that's the best advice I can give you. So knight check, king up, and now he does it anyway. And now he just doesn't have a rook, so, so bad news for him. Knight check, and now he's so sure that that's still going to be checkmate that he decides to run away with his king. All right, so black doesn't want to just, or white doesn't want to just keep giving away his material, so he takes with the knight, threatens the rook, Rook moves, knight check, king up, queen. So good. She's just, now she is threatening, well, not quite a checkmate, but, but threatening the rook. 
threatening the rook and this uh, and this check that could lead to checkmate, maybe doubtful. So White's last move was queen up. So queen h4 is another uh, idea here, putting uh, the queen, knight, and king in the same line, threatening uh, threatening a lot of good stuff. But but that doesn't threaten a rook, so she decides I'm gonna threaten his rook. All right, so rook moves. And so now she decides to threaten another checkmate here. All right. So what, what move can white make in this position to threaten a checkmate? A real checkmate. Not all this hocus pocus stuff. <laughs> all right. Rook h6. Boom. All right. And that's what's played in the game. Is black going to be able to defend this? <laughs> yeah, the black actually has one good defense. That's why you don't freak out. You look. And then if you're playing somebody rated under 1,000, they probably won't find it. <laughs> I, I found it. It's not rook to g8, so that's the clue. <laughs> rook to g8 only, only stops it for so long. What other move can we do to, to try to stop this checkmate? If you don't find it, well, you're going to lose a lot of games if you can't play. Uh, you can't find a defense. So, so basically, all we you just ask yourself a question. If you can't, if you're having trouble finding, it, you ask yourself a question. All right, I need to defend g6. I need to defend g6. How can I defend g6? Can my pawn on a7 defend g6? No. Can my queen on all the way over here defend it? No. Bummer. Can my rook? Yes, but it's horrible. My king's already defended. So who's left? The knight. And then you're like, knight, you better defend it or else <laughs> I'm out of options. Oh, look, I can put my knight up here. Yay. And then I can play some defense. But unfortunately, he's like, well, I don't see a way out of it. I might as well attack. And hope, hope they miss the checkmate for the uh, umpteenth time tonight. But they knew what they were doing this time, and they completed the checkmate. <laughs> yep. Chess isn't supposed to be a comedy. It's supposed to be uh, good moves to checkmate your opponent and be very, very accurate. The number of times they failed in checkmate is hilarious. Yes. But this time they made it, and they got the full point. Congratulations to them all, and thank you all for coming. All right. All right. <laughs>